the Sony booth and you have a new 75 inch 4K TV. So what is this one? This model is our X940E, 75 inch model, brand new for 2017. It's full array local dimming LCD illuminated by LEDs. What's special about this model for 2017 is that it features our proprietary 4K HDR X1 Extreme processor, a processor that was previously only available on our flagship model, the Z9D Master LED television, which continues for us as flagship, but now that technology and processor has made its way down the line into additional models, including this one here. So uh, Sony processing, it makes magic a little bit with the image, right? It, it smooths things out very nicely. It what does really, it do? It really, really does. The reason why is only Sony has the expertise from the lens to the living room. We're the only ones that can make a TV that also create content. We make professional cameras. No one else can match that expertise, that level of mastery. So with respect to processing, processing is what differentiates and makes the difference with everything. Uh, processing is, is yeah. what takes your existing source and enhances it and, and renders it in a stellar fashion so that upscaled content looks more impactful, more impressive. It gives a depth, a realism, a dimension to the picture you wouldn't have otherwise. The X, X1 uh, Extreme is going to be in all the TVs like, eventually? Not all the TVs. Well, I can't speak to future plans, but what I can say definitively is that for 2017, as opposed to it being only available in the flagship premier model, for 2017 you have it more accessible to people in models as far down as our X930E. So this one is an X940? Correct. This good name, X930. You got it. So here we have our X930E, 2017 model as well, featuring that exact same X1 Extreme processor that we were 65 talking about. 65 inch? 65 inch And size. the same basically, or? As well, uh, in the terms same, of the processing capability, very similar, where that television is full array local dimming. This one is a hybrid. It is an edgelet TV and it features our proprietary technology, our Slim Backlight Drive Plus, which is an improvement over the prior model year. It's gonna give you increased brightness, better, deeper contrast, and more points of control. Now, with this television, you're going to get essentially full array type performance from an edge lit TV. Edge lit? Yes. So the light comes from the side somehow? Correct, as opposed to direct, as is the case in the 940. So it doesn't go into the eyes, it goes to the side a little bit? It emanates from the sides, but you have uh, light guides and multiple layers, and as I said earlier, multiple points of contact. So you have more precise granular control than you'd have typically on an edge lit television. Nice. Uh, let's go over there because it talks about the X1 Extreme. And uh, I'm going to get up close with the chip. Uh, here we see the X1 Extreme, uh, which looks like a nice chip. Uh, X1 has been already very successful last year, two years ago. When did it start, X1? Correct. Uh, X1, uh, first to market uh, 2015 series models. Yeah. With that, uh, it imparted some capabilities with respect to uh, noise reduction and upscaling. X1 Extreme elevates the performance of our, our processing on your television in that it does a number of different things. Three key things that you'll be able to enjoy because of the X1 Extreme processor that we'd like for consumers to keep in mind is one, dual database processing. The processor is intelligent enough to see your source resolution real time and uh, so I'm just, if I just get over here, it says there. Uh, real time, analyze resolution and bit rate and make adjustments based on those conditions. It's simultaneously pulling from a noise reduction database as well as an upscaling database. Notice the difference here in this church versus up here, upscale. So which one is the one that's dual? The all, all, this whole upper upstairs. row here features the X1 go. Extreme. The lower pleasure. row would be the ones that have X1 Extreme closed. absent, that don't Thank possess it. Uh, it'll cycle we'll through tomorrow again here real again. quick. Thank you yeah. and have a great evening. Uh, let me show you real quick, just some example of, yeah. of the upscaling versus the X1 Extreme not doing the dual data, or it not having the X1 Extreme. Okay, it's gonna so come Chichi back. Nitsa, here we go. Notice the detail in the brickwork versus down here. It looks more hazy versus much tighter detail. You see that? It sounds like it's um, recreating something that's not even there in the image. It's, seeing it's like a magic kind of. 
almost because it, it has databases to pull from again because of Sony's experience from the lens to the living room it's it knows what it's seen on screen it's intelligent to know what's noise what what would be an artifact what needs to be softened and it's also able to see what that which needs to be sharpened such as textures and so forth so it's not just upscaling which is already quite magical mm -hmm. it's like smart upscaling of different things it's, it's an intelligent object optimization. recognition yeah yeah it's like deep learning kind of thing Kind it's of, if you want to think of it that way. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's the smartest processor out there, and it's so capable, in fact, that another this is thing it super does bit mapping. is uh, super bit mapping, which is to say, with 14-bit processing over here, you'll notice on the screen without X1 Extreme, notice those lines, that kinetic banding there, kind of like the Looney Tunes cartoons. Well, up here, you won't see it, where you have areas of gradation, so sunrises, sunsets. Uh, skies, uh, bodies of water, like the Caribbean Sea here, where you have depth and you have shallows, where you have blending of color, it smooths out areas of blending so it's more naturalistic in appearance without that distracting annoyance of kinetic banding that you might have on lesser processors, or lesser processing means, I should say. And then over here, this is something that's quite special. Object-based. HDR remastering. So on a typical television, the, uh, on the television, it might analyze a frame and adjust that entire frame against a single contrast curve. And By comparison, the, uh, the 4K HDR X1 Extreme processor does object-based HDR you. mastering, Please which is to tomorrow, say the processor is intelligent Thank enough you. to Have recognize distinct evening. individual objects on screen, and those objects on screen are adjusted in, against their own contrast as well as color curves. Thus, simply put, it gives the picture a depth, a realism, a dimension to it that it wouldn't have otherwise. I think it's going to cycle through here again, and I call your attention to the footage of the surfer. If we look at it on the one without it, actually here, I'll, my nice. mistake, it's going to be the sushi content. They'll show you some detail with the yeah. knives and so forth, and the scales of the fish, and even the appearance of, of the fish themselves and the scallops. Not just that the colors are more vibrant, but it, they seem more clearly defined. In a second here, they'll apply some soy sauce to the Maguro. Here we go, this one. Notice that it looks to our eye almost like it's happening there in front of us. That's the immersiveness. That's, that's the optimal experience for high dynamic range content. And it's because of our proprietary X1 Extreme processor. So this is completely awesome, right? Yeah. Uh, do you have a 4K HDR at home? I certainly do, yeah. And uh, it's... Would, it would be nice if there were more more content, right? There's a little bit. It, it's true. Uh, th there's content available, content to be had on streaming services such as Netflix, Amazon, or Sony's very own Ultra service. But the reality is, is anyone who says to you, you could go home this evening with a brand new Sony 4K TV and enjoy your local nightly news in, in 4K uh, is lying to you because it's likely not shot natively in 4K. Thus, the importance of upscaling technologies and capable processors such as this X1 Extreme because upscaling is the bridge from today and the present until such time as there's even more content for you to enjoy at home with your friends and loved ones. And those three things you just shown, uh, is that also part, partly uh, improving 1080p content kind of also? Is it uh, useful for that? Any like content. This, this improves, this adds HDR to content that's not HDR? So because of these televisions, they have the ability to upconvert standard dynamic range content to near HDR, just in a similar fashion as it takes lower resolution sources, say 1080p, and, and upconverts them and enhances them. So a Blu-ray disc, 1080p, will look better than you've ever seen before. You'll notice textures uh, in the wardrobe of your favorite characters and actors that you never noticed before. And it's not that it wasn't present there, it's just your TV previously didn't have the ability to render it. So, do you have a 65 at home or a 55? I have a 55. 55. Yeah. But 65 is quite a lot bigger, right? It is, it is. It and is. is it better to get a 65 to, to actually see all the 4K pixels? Good question. The general guideline for 4K resolution, because it's four times the number of pixels is high def, is you want to observe a guideline of one and a half times the picture height. That would be minimal viewing distance from the display, whatever size works for that space. Now, optimal is for you and your family to decide, but again, the minimum to observe would be one and a half times the picture height. Is it possible there might be some psychovisual uh, aspect to it? Even if you sit further away, it looks more natural if it's 4K, even though you don't see more pixels because you're so far away. You're quite right. I, I, think, I think you'll still enjoy the benefits of it even at greater distances from the display, just because there are literally more pixels present and uh, 4K is awesome, but HDR is, uh, 
also a, a, a huge, like, uh, amazing thing it really, that really adds is. to the TV market, right? It For really TV is. Market. It, and, it, and it's what I think takes things to the next level. Years ago, uh, a number of manufacturers uh, were very focused on 3D. And really, the idea behind 3D was to give consumers a more immersive experience in the home. And I think that with 4K HDR, you have that immersiveness, you have that sense of depth. It feels like the action is not so far removed from you as a viewer, that uh, you don't need to don special glasses. As long as you have a, a capable display, uh, you know, with a capable processor, you could potentially enjoy a great experience. So there's my YouTube channel with 4K content. Is a PlayStation with 4K content. You got it. There's a whole bunch of other 4K content coming. Yeah. Uh, so there is and HDR 2017 there'll hopefully be a lot of HDR that's just going to blow people's minds like completely I would tend to agree I, I would say expect to see content choices increasing at an increasing rate alright so uh, it, and it'd be awesome if there was like a 4K camera so you can have a 4K video conferencing with your family is there anything like that you know uh, not to my knowledge I, I can't speak to future plans I'm not aware of anything as such but uh um, That'd be know, a great selling point, I the, think. The popularity, if you could see, yeah. If there was a 4K HDR camera somehow to do video conferencing with your family and see them in 4K HDR, that'd, that'd be like a, a reason to buy 4K HDR also, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay, but thanks a lot for this. Sure, demo. my pleasure. Thanks. Yeah, my pleasure.